Hello and welcome to My Secret Math Tutor. For this video I want to talk about the different types of numbers that you'll see uh, working through some of our basic math videos. So the first type of numbers that you're usually exposed to are the natural numbers or what we sometimes call the uh, counting numbers. Uh, these are the familiar numbers of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and really they just keep going after that. They're called your counting numbers because they're the ones you usually start counting with, such as, you know, I have uh, one car, two car, three cars, uh, all the way uh, up the line. When you see a notation like this, those little dots after then, it means it keeps going. So this list is much longer than what I've made it here, uh, but it gives you an idea of the first few numbers uh, in the natural numbers. Now, as we get to the whole numbers, you'll notice that it contains a lot of the same numbers, but we also include zero in that category. So I can say that uh, zero, one, two, three, four, five, and of course these keep going as well. All of these are types of whole numbers. Now, don't worry that I actually have listed out the same number twice. I'll get to that in just a little bit. Let's go ahead and see the next group of numbers. The next major group of numbers, uh, those are our integers. And they contain not only the familiar counting numbers, zero, but they also contain the negatives of the counting numbers. So you'll see stuff like negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, and all the way down the line this way, uh, much further into like negative five, negative six, and all the way down, you know, as far as you can go. So one thing that you've probably seen is that I've, I've shown you three groups right now, the natural numbers, uh, and we've seen the integers, and we've seen the whole numbers, but I've listed out the same number more than once in some of these groups. One thing that you want to keep in mind as you're learning about these new groups is that a number can be in more than one group. It's completely okay. So for example, let's take the number five here. We've already seen three different groups, and it turns out that five is in all of those groups. So you want to know that you can call five a type of natural number. You can also call it a whole number. And of course, you can call it one of our integers. Five is in all of those categories. Uh, now, some numbers are only in a few categories, so you want to make sure that you are familiar with those groups. So for example, if I get over to zero here, zero is not one of our natural numbers. It is a whole number. And of course, it is one of our integers. Now, these numbers are actually in many more groups, which we'll see in just a little bit. But for now, notice how you can take them and really put them in more than one group. Uh, so, so far, if I'm looking at a number like negative 2, right now it's only in my integer group. And I'll talk more about how you can classify these numbers uh, in another video. So let's continue on learning about some more uh, groups that we can classify numbers. The next really big group of numbers is our rational numbers. Now, these are any number that can be written as a fraction. So it makes it a little bit more difficult to try and list these out. But one thing you want to recognize is that if it's already a fraction, of course I can write it as a fraction, so it would be counted as a type of rational number. So these guys both contain fractions. Yes, they are rational. It also includes those uh, groups we saw before, like integers, natural numbers, and whole numbers, because all of these can also be written as a fraction simply by putting them over 1. Don't let things like radicals or uh, other types of decimals fool you. Those might also be rational numbers, especially if you can take that radical, simplify it, and it turns into uh, an, an earlier group like a natural number, which of course can be written as a fraction as well. A lot of decimals that stop uh, can also be written as a nice rational value. And that's simply by taking the number and putting it over whatever decimal place uh, it terminates at. So something like 2.8 can really be written as 28 tenths. So since I can write it as a fraction, it is a type of rational number. Numbers that go on forever and ever might be a rational number as long as they repeat themselves along the way. So something like 0.33333 repeating is actually just the fraction one third. And since I can write that one as a fraction, of course it gets to be a rational number. So be on the watch out for any type of number that you can write as a fraction so that you know it goes into the rational numbers group. 
All right, the next major group, the irrational numbers. You almost want to consider these like the opposite of our rational numbers. These are numbers that cannot be written as a fraction. So as hard as we try, uh, their decimal just keeps on going forever and ever, and it doesn't repeat. You'll see numbers in this category like the square root of 3. That one I can't write as a fraction. Or numbers like pi. Again, that one, it has a decimal that goes on forever and ever, and it doesn't ever repeat, so there's no way I can end up writing it as a fraction. These are usually really uh, easy to identify if you are given a decimal. That way you can inspect it and say, okay, yes, I can see that this decimal keeps on going, and moreover that I don't see any uh, repetition in there. Take note that even if this has a little bit that does repeat, like the sixes that repeat, what I'm really looking for is do I have a whole string of numbers that end up repeating? That's really what put it in the rational bin. So unfortunately, even though it does have a couple of sixes repeating in here, it's still not enough to say that this is uh, a rational number. That's why I'm putting it in the irrational group. All right, one more group of numbers. And those are our real numbers. The real numbers really include all of the rational and the irrational numbers. And so they really make up the majority of the numbers you'll see working through some of the basic math videos. So all of our uh, first few groups, like the natural numbers and the whole numbers, those fall into the category of also being real numbers. So you'll see I have things like 2, negative 3, 0, all of those considered real numbers. Now since it contains the rational numbers, you'll also see numbers that can be written as a fraction. Stuff like 4 sevenths, 5 and 1 third, uh, 2.7. Since all of these can be written as a fraction, those are rational, um, and the real numbers contain all of the rationals, so that's why they're in the group. And lastly, it contains all of our irrational numbers. So uh, things like the square root of 5 or pi, yep, those are also considered real numbers. So you can see we have a variety of different groups here that you can really take a number and classify it in. Remember that as you're working through these, that a number really can be in more than one group. So now that you know a few more groups, we can actually even expand on these ones and say, yeah, not only is 5 a natural number and an integer and a whole number, I can also call it a rational number since it, it can be written as a fraction. And it is a type of real number. So always be on the lookout as you're learning new types of numbers to think about the numbers you've already learned about and what groups that those would end up being in. In my next video, we'll talk about how you can take uh, these numbers and classify them a little bit better, and also how these different types fit into one another. If you'd like to see some more videos, please visit MySecretMathTutor.com.